This is Mark Bell from SuperTraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. This message is brought to you by HowMuchBench.net, the Slingshot, <gasps> and the only strength magazine in the world, ThePowerMagazine.com. If some of you people out there are not recognizing this individual who's squatting huge amounts of weight here, it may be because of the fact that he's wearing a power lifting belt. Instead of wearing the WWE Heavyweight Championship belt, this, people, is John Cena. And let's check out what John Cena does well in the squat and what he does poorly. John sent me this video early today, and he said, help a brother out. I helped him a couple years ago with his deadlift, and he's made huge strides in his deadlift. John is extremely strong. He is a meathead, 150%. Um, he's probably about 6'1 or 6'2, about 250 pounds to give you an idea of, uh, of his dimensions here. Now let's go over his technique. Let's go over some of the things that we see that are good. So let's start there. Let's start with the positive. So we see that the head is up, chest is up. All you beginners out there, notice the large chest, the chesticles as I like to call them. Uh, in powerlifting years ago, when I started in powerlifting, people used to, sit, used to say, when you walk the weight out, they'd say, big chest, big chest, big chest. And all that really is referring to, they want you to take a lot of air into your body, uh, whole, and not necessarily like you're taking air into like your chest or into your face and trying to make your face explode. Um, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring your rib cage up a little bit, and you're trying just to keep it there throughout the remainder of the lift. So John's not going to try to like do anything more with this from here. That's just where it is. It's locked in. Same with his head positioning here. He's got great head positioning. The chin is up a little bit. It's also back a little bit. Whoops. It's also back a little bit. Um, but it's not straight up. John is smart enough to know from years of squatting, probably about 20 plus years. He's about 35 years old. And he probably started squatting nearly 20 years ago or maybe even longer ago. Uh, but he's smart enough to know that as he goes down with this squat, his chin might come down. And as his chin comes down, his shoulders might start to round over. And his butt might start to shoot up early. And then you end up with a squat that looks like this. That doesn't look so good, right? So he's trying to keep everything stable. There's a certain stance for a squat, a certain stance for a deadlift, a certain type of setup for a bench press. There's certain ways to set yourself up to be safe. There's even a certain stance for a fight. There's a certain stance for football. There's a certain way to set up for everything so you can be in a more efficient position and so you can protect yourself before you wreck yourself. So chest up, chin up. I like the feet are pointed out a little bit, but not too much as well. You point the feet out too much and you lose torsion, you lose torque. We've learned that from my boy Kelly Sturette. Now let's check out the descent here. I like how he dips down into the squat. This is important not to, uh, not to just blow right past. Watch the aggressiveness. Just boom. Goes right down to the squat. Not super fast, because this is probably getting into the 90% range for John even though he smokes it. Um, I would say he's probably, he could probably squat around 655. Throw some knee wraps on him, maybe he can do a little bit more. But this is starting to get a little heavy for him. So the descent is perfect. It's perfect speed. He never folds over at all. His hips might have kicked up a tiny bit there at the bottom, but give the guy some credit, he, he was getting so deep there. And getting things deep has never been an issue for Mr. Cena. Look at the uh, depth he's got here. Clearly well below parallel. So the form is good. A lot of the technique is good. Um, let's back things up just a bit. The bar placement is good. He's got the bar uh, kind, of, kind of in a moderate spot. It's not too low and it's not too high. If it's too low, a lot of times you have a tendency to lean forward too much which doesn't um, go well with his uh, medium stance that he has. Medium, well, I'd say close stance. He's only about shoulder width or inside of his shoulders. Uh, so if the bar is too low, you can lean forward. If the bar is too high, as you go to come up in the squat, you can end up going like that. <laughs> you can end up craned over because the barbell's on your neck too much. 
okay? And we didn't want to avoid that. Also, where his hands are is good. Like I mentioned earlier, he's about 6'1", 250. So that bar placement and that hand placement is ideal for his body type to be able to lock the squat in. His back is locked in. His upper back is locked in right now. His upper back is a big part of this lift. That's where all the weight is. All the weight's in his upper back, right? He's getting air into his stomach before he descends, and then he's going to drop down into the squat. Now, let's start to point out a few of the flaws that we're seeing here. We'll, watch it. we'll just watch it one time through regular. I'll back her up. Okay. Well, let's back her up a little bit, and let's see what, we're, what we can see here. I'm not seeing a lot of technical error. Um, the one thing I can see here, and John mentioned this was after three hours and 30 minutes of working out, uh, because the guy doesn't get to work out that much. He travels so much. He travels like 320 days out of the year, something uh, insane like that. And so he doesn't get a chance to really get after it all the time. When he's on the road, he still trains. He still pushes it as hard as he can. But there's only so hard you can train when you're a pro wrestler. So you can mainly see, I mean, the angle's not doing him justice, so it makes it a little bit tough to see. But to me, it looks like this knee is out, and that knee is somewhat okay. But to me, it looks like this knee is in. This knee is pretty much clearly inside of his foot, which is not a great position to be strong from. Now, those of you that know John Cena would know that he's got huge quads. He's got a huge vastus medialis, which is that meaty muscle right there. Whoops. <laughs> I pointed to another meaty muscle. The meaty, mu meaty muscle right there around the kneecap. Um, kind of pointed to the weenus there a little bit. Uh, some, uh, he's got some huge muscle around his kneecap. And so by him bouncing inside a little bit, uh, it may not affect him as much as it may affect somebody else because he's got a lot of he's got a lot of muscle mass there. He's he's just brute. He's just got some brute strength. He's a very very strong dude, very hard working dude. Um, so here he comes again. So let's watch it again, and we'll see that hip get kind of closed off there just a little bit. Again, this is about ninety percent. So. As he makes the jump from 585, which this is approximately 585, as he makes the jump from 585 to 625 or 635, he's going to start to get screwed over by that knee slamming in a little bit. He's going to start to say, man, I don't know why my hip hurts so bad. Or I don't want to know why my knee, my knee is really killing me. It's like, it's so weird, right? But it's not so weird because he's got to point his toes his toes need to probably be in just a little bit, pointed inward just a little bit. That would help. Um, but more so than that, maybe this is just where he's comfortable. I mentioned earlier, been squatting for 20 years. He needs to mobilize this hip. He needs to get into that hip. He needs to do some band hip distraction. Uh, Mr. Cena, I urge you heavily, if you have the funds, purchase a book called Becoming a Supple Leopard by Mr. Kelly Sturette. Uh, you can get it off of Rogue Fitness, or you can get it off, I believe you can get it off of Amazon.com is where you can get it from. But I'd urge you to check that out. You can also, if you want to be cheap, which I know you are sometimes, Mr. Cena, uh, if you want to mobilize that hip uh, for free, you can go on MobilityWad.com, check some of that out. You can also go on the YouTubes, and you can check out Mark Bell hijacking the Mobility Wad. Type that in, or Mark Bell and Kelly Sturette, and something will pop up, and you'll see me do a hip uh, mobilization drill. It's uh, from a few years ago when I'm very, very fat, so you'll get a great laugh out of that. But you need to mobilize that hip so that we can drive the, these knees need to come out. The Power Project Army is fully aware of this. We need to get those knees out more. By getting those knees out more, you'll drop down to the hole a little more efficiently, and you will have no you will have no more sticking point with 585 pounds. You will blast through 585 and instead of instead of second guessing yourself on the second rep, which he does right here, looks like he wanted more, doesn't it? It looks like the champ wanted some more. But after years and years of training, John knows just because you can doesn't mean you should. 
and he realizes that you know what if I go for I go for a double here which I could probably squeak out it might get real nasty my knee might come in even harder I might hurt my hip I might hurt my knee or I might hurt my back then I can't wrestle then I can't perform on Monday night and get millions of people fired up about pro wrestling so congratulations to my boy John Cena for living the code for always working hard always working his ass off he realizes that strength is never a weakness and you should as well and that is it from supertraining.tv